Potting, we use potting soil as our basic, as the base for our mix, a commercial potting soil. But it's deficient in nutrients, so we add one quarter compost to that. Our compost is entirely made from vegetable matter. It's uh, mostly lawn clippings. It gives us an excuse to mow our lawn. And straw, which is mixed into the clippings, a little bit of topsoil, and all the vegetable scraps that we use, that, you know, that come from our kitchen. For years, we've used a cement mixer for making our potting mix. It's, it, it's for every bucket and a half of potty mix, plus a uh, half a bucket of compost, we add a half a cup of azomite and a half a cup of green sand, <coughs> excuse me, and a half a cup of colloidal phosphate. And also a quarter cup of blood meal. Oh, you have a half if you blood? add too much blood meal, then you can get ammonia building up in your soil and which uh, can keep seeds from germinating and actually kill some of the seedlings. All the ingredients are brought together just like at Martha Stewart's cooking class. <laughs> we fire up the concrete mixture, throw in a bucket of the potting mix, Throw in half a bucket of compost. Quick run and stretch another half a bucket of cottage mix. And toss that in. And then add the fertilizer. The fertilizer can't be just dumped in. It's got to be spread around. Usually at this point I'm running to turn on the water, but it's already turned on. And then stand back, because I don't like to breathe any of this stuff, so I stand back when I do this. I put in water until it starts to fall off the bottom of the cement mixer. you're young, you pick this up and dump it into the pan. If you're not, you bail it out bit by bit. We have the half inch blocker, which we use for starting seeds. And we have the two inch blocker, which we transplant the half-inch blocks into once the, once the plants are up and growing. And we have the Wells Family Farm 3-inch blocker, which is good for <coughs> bigger plants like tomatoes. <coughs> and if you're really energetic, we have the Wells Family Farm 4-inch blocker which is rarely used around Wells Family Farm because nobody's that energetic anymore. The Wells Family Farm blockers are homemade blockers, it looks like. Uh, yes, that's, they are. They, these blockers come from Johnny's and are really, actually quite expensive. Uh, we make them last as long as possible. How long do they last? Ten years. And... <clears throat> We make thousands of blocks a year. I've tried to calculate how many blocks in a year, and I've forgotten how many it actually is, but the number is staggering. The reason for using the little blocker for seeds is because a lot of your seeds don't come up. So you don't want to waste a lot of potting soil on seeds that don't come up. And these, this little guy hardly uses any potting soil at all. And then when you graduate to the bigger blocker, your seeds are already up and you only transplant those plants that are doing well anyway. We only buy flasks that don't have holes, which you have to make a special effort to look for because most flasks come with holes in the bottom. But because of the way we water them, 
we want water to sit in the bottom of the flat and the blocks then soak it up. So what's the consistency you're looking for here? To well, make a good kind block. Of like mortar. Um, not soupy, but not not at all dry. Um, just kind of nice and pliable. That's how easy it is to do it. And you can see that the, the insert on the bottom of this block maker makes an impression that will just fit the little half inch blocks that come from this guy, uh, the little seedling blocks. I can make a flat of blocks every two minutes. I should mention that Elliot Coleman has a very complicated recipe for blocks and it's how we got started on blocks in the first place. When we first read his book, The New Organic Grower, which I think now must be at least 25 years old, <coughs> and he puts an amazing amount of different things in his blocking mix, which we tried to do. But Elliot Coleman is a lot easier to read about than he is to copy. And we gave up on, on doing some of the ingredients that he, put, that he put in and discovered that very simple materials will make a fine block. And these are quite wet now and when we transplant we want them wet. But uh, as they dry out they firm up and after they go through a few cycles of wetting and drying they're really easy to water. We just water, we kind of flood the corners of the flat and the blocks, will, they hold together really well. At first you have to be careful with watering when they're kind of young and tender, but they, they uh, get full of roots and I will make a few little blocks. Um, but this will do for now, this will do for purposes of Hollywood. <coughs> There's a set of half inch blocks ready for seeding. There's a little depression in the top of each one that comes from the bottom of the blocker that uh, you can put a seed into. Each one of these little guys will fit right into one of these bigger guys. And that's the process when you transplant. Um, these are different plantings of lettuce. This one is exactly a week older than this one. We plant lettuce once a week and they, as soon as they get in there they just start going like crazy. They love to, they'll fill this block with roots. You can see how easy, how easy it is to pick it up and toss it around. There, there's just uh, a lot of cohesiveness in these blocks. One week, this is two weeks, these are four weeks. And, and they, those are ready to plant. These are ready to plant. The only thing that keeps us from doing it is inertia. This is all broccoli that's in the two inch blocks and it's the same deal. We start them in a half inch block and transplant them to a two inch block. The base of the mix would then be peat moss. And I would take a bale of peat moss and run it through a half inch hardware cloth screen to break it down and then use a bucket of that instead of the potting mix and add a half a bucket of perlite to it and that makes it very much like the potting mix and then add a half a bucket of compost just like we do just like you with did. the potting mix and add all the same nutrients to it especially then because the potting mix sometimes has nutrients in it but they're never quite sufficient and using just peat and perlite of course there's nothing in it so we'd add a little bit extra along with our compost <laughs>